Welcome to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Folks, uh, do you hear that? Do you feel that electricity? Energy. Crazy. I say, with an, with, with an audience this hot, uh, I don't need to go to the gym. <laughs> you guys give me strength. I bet I could bench 240. Yeah. Boom! Folks, I gotta say, you know, it's fall. I tried to prepare. Got my flu shot, got my bivalent COVID booster, but the one thing I did not prepare for was World Cup fever. <laughs> Symptoms include uh, a little achy and getting excited about scoreless ties. <laughs> it's by far the biggest sporting event in the world, but this year there's been a bit of a cloud over the World Cup because it's being played in the country of Qatar, a desert country with a repressive regime and a terrible human rights record where their leaders have made homosexuality illegal. Okay, it's like, um, it's like if Ron DeSantis had oil. <laughs> so, after Qatar was announced as the host, seven European countries got together. They wanted to support the LGBTQ community by having all their captains wear an armband that says, One Love. It's very nice. It also makes sense. Soccer players don't care what you do in the bedroom as long as you don't use your hands. <laughs> okay? Good, good, good. Feet, Feet, head. Good. 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 <laughs> now, they planned these armbands for the last couple of months, right? Everybody knew about them. But then just two days ago, FIFA threatened that any captain with the armband would be given a yellow card, okay? A yellow card, which is... bad? Is it... <laughs> it's good? It's a banana coupon? I don't... Don't follow the game. Now, people, people were outraged by this. So in response, FIFA said they'd issue their own armbands that support varied causes, like hashtag football unites the world, and hashtag be active, and hashtag bring the moves. Yes. The powerful social justice message of bring the moves <laughs> reminds me of the stirring words of MLK. I have a dream that one day we will all shake our groove thing. <laughs> Take me to Funky Town. <laughs> then yesterday, just yesterday? Yesterday, FIFA ordered Belgium to remove the word love from their shirts. Yes, the word love is apparently an inappropriate message on a soccer jersey. That sacred space is reserved for celebrating important ideas like medical flim-flam hucksters, <laughs> Russian state oil conglomerates, and dong. <laughs> That's a powerful message. I mean... Hashtag dong. <laughs> the homophobia there is so extreme, we've heard reports that rainbow-wearing fans have been refused entry to the games. They're banning love and rainbows. Basically, FIFA is the bad guy in a Care Bears movie. <laughs> Hugs and friendship will be destroyed unless I unleash the power of my dislovinator machine. Also, no beer. <laughs> <laughs> there is a one team not afraid to protest because yesterday, before their match against England, Iran's players remained silent during their national anthem in an apparent protest of the Iranian regime. That is... Yeah, come on. That has consequences. I mean, that's... That's a dare. That's a risk. That... What's the word? That is incredibly brave. Or they forgot the words. <laughs> it happens. Oh, say can those stripes with a flag that's all stripey. <laughs> oh, Canada, <laughs> play ball. <laughs> the word is the players were expressing solidarity with Iranian women who have taken to the streets in the last two months after a 22-year-old named Masa Amini died in police custody. The team wasn't alone. Iranian fans made their displeasure known outside the stadium and displayed the slogan of the movement. Women, life, freedom. What are three things that are illegal in Qatar? Johnny, tell me what I've won. A free trip to not go to the World Cup. And having as much beer as you can drink on your new dining room set from Broy Hill. Back to you, Steve. What else is going on? Oh, this just came in, right? We just found this out. 
Remember how the former president was the only one in modern history to never release his taxes? Y'all remember that? Yeah. yeah, well, well, and that the House Ways and Means Committee has been fighting to see those taxes since 2019. Oh, 2019, we were so innocent. <laughs> N95 was just a bingo number. Pete Davidson was dating Kate Beckinsale. <laughs> and January 6th was just National Bean Day. Of course, every step of the way, the former president did everything in his power to obstruct and delay the release of his taxes going all the way to the Supreme Court. But I am pleased to announce by the power vested in me by the CBS television network <laughs> that just a few moments ago, the Supreme Court rejected the former president, clearing the way for the House Ways and Means Committee to get six years of his tax returns. That's a long time coming. It's a long time. Now, now, following this ruling, now we can finally find out if he wrote off Eric as a loss. <laughs> keep in mind, keep in mind, the Supreme Court is composed of three of his nominees, and they still rejected him. Normally, to get three people to reject his requests, he has to marry them. That's not really, oh, really? <laughs> you know what he's like. That's not, the, that's not the only bad news for the former president. Yesterday, we learned that the Manhattan District Attorney's Office has jump-started its criminal investigation into his hush money payments to porn star Stormy Daniels. <laughs> that's right! Stormy Daniels is back, baby! Yeah! Forget 2019, it's 2018 all over again. So break out those Tide Pods, argue over whether we heard Laurel or Yanny, and somebody stuff that Thai soccer team back in that cave. <laughs> They're fine. They're all fine. Ron Howard made a movie about it. They're fine. <laughs> This case has been kicking around for years. It's been pursued, it's been dropped, and now uh, this case has come back to life. In fact, the push for prosecution is being called the zombie theory. I, don't, I, for one, don't think it's fair to associate the former president with zombies. I mean, he only gets his hair from a corpse. <laughs> it's only... <laughs> How soon we forget. <laughs> oh, oh. It's only two more days, two more days, two more days till Thanksgiving, which means you should have started drinking three days ago. <laughs> President Biden kicked off the holiday early at a military base in North Carolina, where he had a meal with Marines and their families, and he gave a speech where he shouted out to the youngsters. Uh, imagine, this has to be boring, boring, boring for these kids to stand up here. You're allowed to do anything you want, including go steal a pumpkin if you want. Yes. <laughs> you heard him right. The President of the United States told them to steal a pumpkin. But that is a welcome change from a few years ago when a pumpkin tried to steal the presidency. <laughs> Biden, there you go! Hey, I see you. There I you go! You. Come on. Found that sweet spot. It's a delivery. Don't make fun of his wife or his hair. <laughs> Biden, of course, thanked the troops for their service, and so do we. And then, and then Biden tried his hand a little comedy. So anyway, Thank you, thank you, thank you for all you've done. By the way, I'm serving mashed potatoes, so come to my place. I'm the, all kidding aside, thank you for everything you've done. That is so sweet. That is really lovely. It's a very nice, very sincere. Yeah, but he is serving mashed potatoes. It's, it's, it's such a classic joke. Knock, knock. Who's there? I'm serving mashed potatoes. I'm serving mashed potatoes who? All kidding aside, thank you for everything you've done. <laughs> to get to the other side. <laughs> Turkey's uh, not the only thing on the menu getting you sleepy this year because with so many states legalizing recreational marijuana, folks have begun celebrating Thanksgiving. <laughs> the youngsters, be warned, Thanksgiving can be a gateway to harder holidays like Crackmas, <laughs> Rosh Hashanah, St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> this is a big is it? That's the most dangerous of all. 
I'm dancing with that chicken. <laughs> this is a big year for New Yorkers who enjoy Satan's spinach because the state has just issued its first 36 dispensary licenses for recreational marijuana. Wow! New Yorkers, New Yorkers are going to be so excited to finally try marijuana. <laughs> These dispensaries cannot open soon enough because, due to a surplus supply and no legal way to sell it, there is too much weed stockpiled in New York right now. Experts could tell New York had too much weed when it left the party without saying anything, sat on its bed in the dark and Googled, can you be high forever? <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Kate Blanchett and Paul Dano. When we come back, I help you prepare your turkey. Take some notes.